Hey up everyone. Today I'm going to talk about some of the things the executive committee at Ducati Motorcycles would prefer you didn't know. There are more to be honest, but these are the 10 standout facts about the company that they maybe aren't so proud of. To be clear, I think the bevel drive Ducatis are some of the most brilliantly engineered motorcycle engines ever built. I am not a hater, but even the best companies have some dock corners and the bigger they get, the darker those corners seem to be. Maybe I just live in a dream world where I think passionate specialists should be more important than corporate giants. Maybe you disagree entirely. I'm sure there are plenty of Ducatisti out there who will have something to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below when you hear what I have to say. If you find this or any of my other videos interesting, please share them with your friends too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It means the videos will appear in your subscriptions page on YouTube as soon as they are uploaded. And it helps to get the information out there to other people interested too. Now, this one's hardly a secret. But it might be worse than you think. Ducati plays on its heritage. An image of Italian passion and the mystique of a historic brand rooted in Italian craftsmanship. However... They'd lost any real connection to the historic motorcycle industry in 1985 when the Castellani brothers from Kajiva sold the company to the US-based investment fund called Texas Pacific Group. Then, in 2005, it was finally purchased by the huge multinational car manufacturer Volkswagen Audi Group. Being a tiny part of a huge multinational industrial corporation is not necessarily a bad thing but it is not small batch Italian craftsmanship. The company is German owned and as well as the factory in Italy, it has now opened a factory in Thailand and also works with a third party manufacturer in Brazil. It isn't the only manufacturer doing this, but it is one of them. And I say fine, manufacture wherever you want to, but don't pretend to be something you aren't. The second point, is Ducati, contrary to popular belief, did not actually invent the desmodromic valve actuation system. Desmodronic valve systems are first mentioned in patents by Gustav Mies in 1896. Austin's marine engine of 1910 was an all aluminium twin overhead valve engine that had twin magnetos, twin carburetors, desmodromic valves and produced over 300 horsepower. The 1914 Delage and Nagant Grand Prix cars also used desmodromic valve systems, although they were quite different to the present day Ducati system. Azariti were a short lived Italian manufacturer, producing 175 and 350cc twin cylinder engines from 1933 to 1934. Some of these had desmodromic valve gear too. They used one cam to open and a second separate camshaft to close the valves. Then, in 1954 and 1955, Mercedes-Benz built the W196 Formula One racing car and the Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR sports car. Both of these had desmodromic valve actuation systems. It was only in 1956 that Fabio Taglioni, the Ducati engineer, developed a desmodromic valve system for the Ducati 125 Grand Prix motorcycle, creating the very first 125 Desmo. Now, Ducatis are expensive to buy, but that's nothing compared to the cost of actually keeping them running. Yes, they are technologically advanced motorcycles from a framed manufacturer, but some of the prices just don't make sense. $2,000 for a regular service for one poor guy on Reddit is just one example, and there are plenty more. Sometimes it does seem like the dealerships make up their own rules with pricing. Once you become the owner of a particular car or motorcycle brand, you become seen as part of that community, and sometimes that community doesn't have the best reputation. We've all heard tales of BMW riders and Audi drivers with self-importance issues. Sadly, the stereotype of a Ducati owner is not that different. More money than sense is one of the most common statements you'll hear. Believe me, Ducati won't mention this in any sales brochure. In 2010, the Gibbs Law Group filed a class action lawsuit against Ducati 
for fitting and refusing to acknowledge defective fuel tanks on multiple models. This fault could cause atomized fuel to escape from both the filler cap and the fuel delivery hoses. The fuel tanks would degrade, deform and expand due to the air unsuitability for modern fuel, and the lawsuit was approved in court. Ducati had to issue an extended warranty for a big chunk of its lineup. Now, this wasn't about cheaper scramblers built into Ireland. This was the range-topping Panigale and Multistrada models. Since then, Ducati have made every possible effort to sweep this whole incident under the carpet and keep it out of the media in a way that is only possible when done by a true corporate giant with very deep pockets and friends in very high places. Now, let's not pretend that Ducati's engineering mistakes end with the fuel tanks either. One of the latest issues with various Ducati scramblers, they suffered from the rear cylinder getting so hot that riders actually suffered thigh burns. Not great for a company that takes pride in its engineering. One piece of advice from a dealer read, If you are approaching heavy traffic, shut off the motor and walk the bike forwards as the traffic moves. Stay vigilant, and once the cars up ahead are in motion at 10 miles an hour, fire up your scrambler again and get ready to ride. I can't really imagine running along at 8 miles an hour in leathers and helmet, trying not to get run over by frustrated drivers on a busy city road, to be honest. And soon, the shortened version of the advice became, just turn off your bike and leave it to cool for 15 minutes. Another recall of the Scramblers came in 2016, when it was discovered that a 15mm bolt had been used instead of a 17mm bolt in the Scrambler's side stand. This could cause the side stand sensor to read the position of the side stand roll. Sometimes it wouldn't allow the bike to start, and other times it would allow you to start and pull away or even though the side stand was down. However, the biggest problem was that the stalling would sometimes happen at riding speeds. The engine could just die randomly mid-corner with no warning. Hardly a great safety feature. In 2014, after poor performances in MotoGP, instead of sticking to factory team regulations, Ducati decided that they would compete using the open regulations. This would allow them more development time as well as tyre and fuel advantages over the other teams in exchange for running a standard ECU. This was a system that had been introduced to help small non-factory teams be more competitive. Although this was eventually agreed by the other teams, the agreement was made under duress and accompanied by the threat of Ducati walking away from MotoGP completely. The standard ECU was replaced with a straight copy of the racing ECU, so in reality they had suffered no penalties. There was a similar situation in 2018. During the off-season, Ducati had plans for more unapproved testing, until MotoGP organisers stepped in to deny any permission to extend pre-season testing. Before the latest rule changes, and the improvements in Ducati's performance in MotoGP and World Superbikes. The company's reputation in MotoGP was tarnished by even more controversy. Ducati added a winglet attached to the side of the bike that was designed by a Formula One aerodynamic specialist. According to Ducati, it was used solely to cool the rear tyre. The regulators, however, saw it differently. They accused Ducati of using the winglet to generate additional downforce, which was forbidden in MotoGP at the time. Arguments continued, and an appeal was won, but then challenged by all the other competing teams, and gradually it just got airbrushed out of the headlines, again. Their latest attempt to improve their performance in the racing world is all done in plain sight. They have simply loaded the grid with Ducati satellite teams, who all have independent testing and development time allocations. They then feed all of the other team's development data into the bank of information used by the full factory team. This effectively gives them many more hours of practice and development time than any other team. It worked in MotoGP and World Superbikes. Despite protests from the other teams, this has not been punished. 
maybe this is not breaking the rules completely, but it bends them severely, and in my opinion, has detracted from the racing. I will let you draw your own conclusions. Well, that's it for this video, and thanks for watching. These are my 10 facts you might not have known about the fabled name of Ducati motorcycles. How it has been co-opted by a car manufacturer known to be unscrupulous at best, and whose only real goal is to squeeze every last dollar or pound it can from your pocket. Leave your comments below to let me know what you think. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more motorcycle adventures and interesting chatter from the world of bikes. Enjoy the ride everyone!